Hi, I'm Dr. Charles Cobbs. I wanted to present a case for uh, my audience on neurosurgical issues today of a very um, interesting type of tumor called germinoma of the pineal region. Um, I have a patient who came in complaining of headache, nausea, and vomiting. And when we see that, we usually think there's some kind of pressure building up in the head. Uh, we did an MRI on the patient and we saw a tumor in the area of the pineal region in the brain. And if I use a model of the brain, I can show you what we're talking about. So if this is the brain, and that's the frontal lobes here, if we take the brain and divide it in half, what we see is a cutaway view of the brain is like this. So inside the brain, there are areas that have spinal fluid in them called the ventricles. At the back of the third ventricle, which is here, there's one ventricle up there and on the other side, and those are the lateral ventricles. This is called the third ventricle. And in the back of the third ventricle, right in that spot above my finger is the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is right next to what's called the superior colliculus, which is an area right here where there are little, little bumps on the brain and those are involved in movement of the eyes up and down and sideways. Um, another important thing to know about this, this location is the brain constantly is producing spinal fluid and the spinal fluid has to circulate around the inside, come through this area through the ventricles, go down through that little opening right there that's called the aqueduct of Sylvius, go into this area here called the fourth ventricle and then exit the bottom of the head through the base of the skull around the spinal cord down here. If you have a mass right there where my finger is and it blocks this little area here called the aqueduct, then the spinal fluid continues to get produced in the top part of the brain and it's under pressure and can't get down and out of the head and the pressure builds up, builds up and these ventricles get dilated. So if a person presents with a tumor in that location, the pineal region, and it blocks the flow of spinal fluid and they back up their spinal fluid and, the, and it dilates the spinal fluid spaces or the ventricles in the brain and they get hydrocephalus. So when a patient presents like this, what we try to tell them is there are two things we need to do. Number one, we need to figure out what type of tumor they have so we can treat it. The reason we do that is some tumors in that area from the pineal gland are very very uh, easily treated with radiation and chemotherapy, and some are not. So if you biopsy a little bit of that tumor and you find out it's one of the ones that's easily treated with radiation and chemo, then you don't need to do further surgery. Um, what kind of tumors are very easily treated with radiation and chemo? Well, one type of tumor is called germinoma. And uh, why? what is a germinoma? Well, a germinoma, is a type of tumor that can arise in the brain or similar to tumors that arise in the testicles or even in the ovaries where it's thought that when you're a fetus, a little tiny bit of embryonic tissue is left behind in that spot. And if it mutates and becomes a cancer, then you can get what's so called a germ cell tumor. And it's the type of tumor that produces the same hormones and molecules that you see during the fetal development. One of them is called alpha fetoprotein, for instance, or beta HCG is another one. So we can test the spinal fluid and the blood to see if those hormones are being produced. And if they are, that might uh, also suggest that you're dealing with a germ cell tumor. Um, the other problem you have to deal with is the hydrocephalus. One interesting thing about people with hydrocephalus, if it's blocked in this area, then there's a thin little membrane right above where my finger is there, right in front, uh, right behind what's called the mammillary bodies. And if you put a tube down through the brain, just like that, and go right to that spot, and then make a little hole in the opening, then that will allow spinal fluid to come out from the top part of the brain through that little hole and then out around the brain and out um, outside of the head where it needs to go. And that's called an endoscopic third ventriculostomy because this is the third ventricle and you're opening up the ventricle with a little hole there. So in this patient situation, 
the strategy is to do two things. One, get a diagnosis by biopsying the tumor, and number two, remove that pressure by doing a third ventricular opening. So what we're gonna see is we're gonna meet this patient, we're gonna understand how he presented with this typical symptoms of raised intracranial pressure, headache, nausea, vomiting, blurred vision, etc. Then I'm gonna tell him that we're gonna do, do a uh, combined surgery where we go in through one little opening here. First thing we're gonna do is go down here and open the spinal fluid space and allow that spinal fluid to come out through the opening we make. And then we're gonna angle this way and go back to that part of the brain where the tumor is and take a little nibble of that tissue and send it for a pathology diagnosis. And once we confirm the diagnosis, he can go on to get uh, definitive treatment and he should be um, fixed in terms of that hydrocephalus pressure since we're gonna open up a new channel for the spinal fluid to get out. Appreciate you letting me do this video to talk to you about this issue you had. Um, tell me, so about for a month now, you've had headaches and vomiting? Yes. Do you, how do you feel now? Doesn't feel as bad today. Not as bad today. We gave you something called dec dexamethasone, a steroid that helps with some of that swelling. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and what we found is when we finally got you in, you went to multiple doctors and finally multiple ER visits. Finally, someone did a CAT scan of your head and they found that you've got a mass that's blocking the flow of your spinal fluid. And you understand that, right? Yes, sir. Um, do you have blurred vision? Uh, at times, yes, I could. Okay, blurred vision is due to the pressure in your head from all this backed up spinal fluid. So I'm gonna go over here to the MRI and tell you what we're gonna do, okay? Okay. So we're looking at your MRI right here. And on your MRI, if I could move it around a little bit, this is the front of your face here. This is the area called the ventricle and it's really dilated. It should be a lot smaller than that. Mm -hmm. And there's a mass right here, this thing that is measuring about 15 millimeters. Normally spinal fluid is made up here in the top of the brain and it goes down here and then through this area to get down to here. But you're being, your spinal fluid is being blocked by this mass. So we're gonna take a endoscope coming in this direction. We're gonna biopsy the mass. And at the same time, we're gonna go down to the bottom of the brain right here and make a little hole through the base of the brain doing what's called a endoscopic third ventriculostomy. So hopefully after this is done, the spinal fluid will be able to go this way and get out this way instead of going this way where it's blocked. So you should feel better and also we'll have tissue from this mass to determine what this is and it may be something we can treat. Okay? Thank you for your participation. Thank you for your so what we've done is we've got the patient intubated with the breathing tube. We've registered him to the stealth station. So our, his MRI is downloaded on this computer screen. We've selected an uh, entry site here. And then over here, we've selected the tar two targets. One target is the floor of the third ventricle, which is yellow. And if we run that plan, we can see it go through down to the yellow target. That's our trajectory for that one. Boom, right there. And then the other plan is the plan for getting to the tumor, which is right there. So if we run that one, we'll see it. Let's scroll through that. We'll see it go through to reach the tumor right there. Uh, right there, that's the blue one. So the biopsy and the third ventriculostomy should both be doable from this one entry spot. And here we go. Okay, so here we are at the back table with all the instruments we'll use for this case. The main instruments we're gonna use are this video camera, which is gonna be hooked up to that endoscope there. That's gonna go into the patient's brain. First, we have to place the sheath in and it'll go down the tube of that sheath like that. Then we're gonna to go to this little blue thing here, which is called a Fogarty catheter 
It's got a little bubble at the end of it and you can shrink it down or dilate it like that. Yeah. And that's gonna, we're gonna poke a hole in the bottom of his third ventricle and dilate a hole with that. And then after that, we're gonna change our trajectory and we're gonna use this little grabber guy, which can slide down through the endoscope and come out the other end. And when you squeeze it, it'll open up and grab, grab stuff through the little grabber device there. And we'll send that to the pathologist. And we're gonna send spinal fluid to look for markers for fetal alkaline phosphatase and placental alkaline phosphatase um, which are markers of germ cell tumors. So if we have tissue and spinal fluid, and, and if we divert the spinal fluid so he doesn't have hydrocephalus, then we'll hopefully be in good shape. So we met the patient and uh, he told us his story and we have him set up for surgery. So the next video, you'll see me kind of going over how we coordinate with the stealth navigation uh, making an entry site, going to where we need to, to get the uh, tumor tissue and to open the third ventricle. Um, and then I will um, narrate the video we took when we were in there with the endoscope. So the first thing you're gonna see on this video is that we've introduced the endoscope. We've gone down into the bottom of the third ventricle. These are the mammillary bodies at the bottom of the third ventricle and there's a little membrane here we're poking a hole through that membrane with this little teeny tiny tube that has a little balloon on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dilate that balloon up and make a hole. So you can see we made a hole there. We're gonna dilate it, I'm going fast forward. We're gonna dilate it up again. And then we're looking through that hole with the endoscope. And what we're actually looking at is the top of a huge artery in the bottom part of the brain called the basilar artery where it bifurcates into this branch and that branch called the superior um, cerebellar and posterior cerebral arteries. These are the posterior cerebral arteries. Um, and as we continue with the surgery, now we've opened up that hole. So we now have a opening to drain spinal fluid now we're moving the endoscope back to the other side and we're looking down to an area where the cerebral aqueduct normally is and there's some abnormal looking tissue and the goal is to get some of that tissue. So what we do is we introduce under the endoscope our little grabber device and it should come out and we're trying to find I guess we go back and we're checking the, that part. And then we eventually get to where we're introducing the little biopsy forcep and there it is. And so we're looking at the aqueduct of Sylvius here and the pineal region is here and there's a bulging abnormal tumor portion there. So we go in there and we grab some of that tissue we don't get a lot, but here you can see us grabbing it right there. It's hard to video and grab at the same time. But we grab some of that tissue. You can see me pulling out a little piece of it. And we pull that out and we hand it off and then we go in and try to grab some more tissue. So the process is basically going in, grabbing tissue with this grabber device, sending that tissue off and hoping that we'll get a good diagnosis based on removing some of that tissue. It's difficult to remove the whole thing in that way, but by taking off these pieces of tissue, the goal is to essentially have enough for the pathologist to look at. So once we've done that, we're pretty much done with both parts of the surgery, which is the part where we made a hole for the spinal fluid down at the bottom, and that's what I'm looking at again and just checking that. And now we're coming out through the, what's called the foramen of Monroe, which is part of the brain where the lateral ventricles are up here. The fornix is this curved area here. The third ventricle's down there. And this is a type of tissue that makes uh, the spinal fluid called choroid plexus. Um, 
and then we essentially take the mic take the endoscope out all the way through the tube you can see coming all the way out and then we're done okay so you are two days after the surgery looks like the incision is doing fine mm -hmm. do you feel like the surgery helped you yes immensely i'm actually remembering things a lot better and i guess it was a while that i didn't realize how much pain i had in my head so a lot of we, yeah i've been able to think clearly a lot better listen to my wife better uh, and so, no, I think I think it was a really good success. So we opened up the channels for the spinal fluid, so that's why your pressure is better. Oh, okay. And uh, also, we took a biopsy of that mass, and it'll, like you know, it'll take a few days for us to get that information, and then we'll have you come back and meet with our team um, okay. to get the results of that in a week or two, and then go from there to figure out what what else needs to be done. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks for being such a nice patient. Hey, thank you for helping me. All right. <laughs> okay, so this is a video to show before and after of the patient's brain MRI. This is when he came in originally, and what we see here is he has this tumor uh, here in the pineal region blocking the fourth, the aqueduct right here. So we came in here and we saw um, this little opening or this little area, and we took a biopsy. We sent the tissue, and as, as you see here, the the ventricle is really dilated because he's got backed up spinal fluid. We also made a little opening down here so the spinal fluid could come out this way uh, instead of having to go through the normal channels that way. So after about six months of uh, chemo, we look over here now and what we see is that, first of all, the ventricles are a lot smaller now than they were over here. You can see they're a lot bigger here. So we have um, taking care of the hydrocephalus issue. Um, the other thing you notice is the tumor is just a little bit of a scarred thing here, this little white guy here, um, whereas the tumor before was this big uh, mass right there. It's pretty much gone now. And we didn't find tumor anywhere else in his spinal cord area. Um, and he will get radiation probably to this area here. Um, so his prognosis for a germinoma is pretty good. Uh, his hydrocephalus is fixed um, and he's probably got about a 90% chance of having this thing cured over time, uh, which is great. So uh, hopefully he will never have this come back, but we'll have to keep checking him for many years in the future with MRI scans.